Hi, I'm Pretty Please, Singapore's top art appreciator. Today, I'm checking out the out of sight art installation here at the Arts House. It's basically a large hopscotch, but if you speak French, it's known as a morel. When you walk through this entire hopscotch, you will, you will kind of think of your future. So basically, it gets you thinking, lah. maybe something you don't typically do. Yeah. My favourite quote of the Out of Sight Art installation is the destination is straight on because I think sometimes we tend to lose sight of ourselves and we kind of forget like what's the big picture, what's in front of us, why, why, what's the purpose of us doing what we're doing today, you know? So I think it's very important to remember that the destination is just straight on. You asked me get outside what? In case you thought that a ride on Singapore Flyer was just a chance to save a Singapore skyline, think again. They now offer you a chance to time travel. This is the Time Capsule, Singapore Flyer's newest attraction. Ali and I are super lucky. We've been invited as the very first guest. The Time Capsule is an immersive adventure that takes you on a thrilling journey through Singapore's past, present and future. With the time-travelling mascot of the Time Capsule, R65 as your dedicated guide. We begin 700 years ago as we meet the myths and legends of Singapore's founding years. Ali is enthralled. I have never seen her so excited. Scattered around the room are these little leaves highlighting interesting facts from Singapore's history. Traditional Malay folklore is retold in such a unique and artistic way. This attraction is not just for kids, it's an immersive adventure for the whole family. The river of time just blew me away. It was like being on a boat floating through time. From Singapore's establishment as a trade port to the modern skyscrapers of today. We were both thrilled as R65 guided us through Singapore's bold aspirations and its remarkable journey from a tiny tropical island to the beautiful green city of today, even giving us a glimpse into its future. I thought Ali might have had enough history, we entered this immersive orchestration of visuals and music. This display perfectly captures the vibrancy and vitality of Singapore. A virtual teleportal entices you with real pictures of the city, making you more excited about the Singapore Flyer journey to come. These interactive panels are the perfect way to learn about the cultures of Singapore and to celebrate the differences that unite this multicultural city. And to end your journey, you can take a picture and become a part of R65's memory orb. It feels like we were now a part of Singapore's story. Wasn't that amazing? And you learned so much. Wow, you get to take photos with R65. You know, it really does look like a red dot. And of course, some photos of just the two of us to remember this wonderful day. The Singapore Flyer is Asia's largest giant observation wheel, standing at a stunning 165 meters. Well, that's high. The time capsule gave me a glimpse of Singapore's past and as I take in the view, I can't help but marvel at the transformation of Singapore from a tiny tropical island to the sprawling metropolis it is today. Wow, that was a journey like never before. We are going to need something to remember it. All that fun really works up an appetite. This restaurant has some of Singapore's finest Cantonese food, the perfect way to end the day. We had so much fun and we now feel like we've seen Singapore from above and all around. Yep. The time capsule, coupled with the Singapore flyer, tells you Singapore's story like it's never been told before. This is a journey that should not be missed.
Hi, my name is Simon Wong, and I'm an entrepreneur with a background in branding and design. Right now, we're sitting on the butterfly bench, which is a memorial bench to my late wife, Tae Hee. Um, we're outside the Asian Civilizations Museum. Our National Heritage Board has uh, donated these 150-year-old gallery floorboards, which just happen to be the right shape and proportion for her bench. Several years ago, a friend of mine decided it would be a great idea to build sidecars. So we started making use of the sidecars in, in, in our events. So we used them to, to raise funds, for, again, for various, uh, various charities. And after a while, we, we kind of realized if my wife had survived, we wouldn't solely be working for cancer-related charities. All along, we've been using the sidecars for, for, for events uh, and, and, as you know, for fundraisers. For the sidecar tours, it's usually visitors to Singapore. But we do get a good percentage of locals as well, and they're, they're very curious to see Singapore in a, in a different way. Vespers are, are, are very, um, they're very special. You know, they, they, they draw out a reaction from people that motorbikes don't usually, don't, you don't usually get it from a motorbike. You look at a Vespa, it's cute. And, it's, and then with a sidecar, it's really, really cute. So the first reaction of anyone is the smile. You know, and then the phone comes out and they just want to take a photo of it. You could be walking down the same street and you don't notice a lot of the, the details you know, around you. Um, you may not notice all the details on the buildings and so on, but for some reason when you're in a sidecar, suddenly your awareness switches back on and you start to see, you, know, you start to really notice all the details and you start to notice what's around you and what you're seeing on your visit to Singapore. So I think it's a lot to do with the, the, the change of format and it's a, it's a very, very unique format, so you do notice. Twenty has made things a little different for all of us. With travel restrictions and safe management measures in place, we've had to adjust the way we spend our time outdoors to hang out with our friends and family. If you are keen to sightsee from the comfort of your homes, fret not. Now, you can explore the vibrant Singapore River as we navigate through a 3.2 km trail of scenery, history, food and entertainment. First on our list is the historical Boat Key. Situated at the southern bank of the Singapore River, Boat Key is known for being a bustling commercial hub. Known to locals as the belly of the cup, in reference to its curved shape, which resembled the fish, Boat Key was once a location where many go-downs or warehouses were built. Funny you should ask. As you stroll along Boat Key, the path seems to dissect history. On one side are old, meticulously preserved shop houses. On the other, you'll spy sleek skyscrapers. Take your time to admire the carefully preserved shop houses along the area. While it evokes a timeless sense of nostalgia, don't you think these shop houses are also Instagram worthy? Even hard to impress design connoisseurs will be wowed by these colorful heritage shop houses. Boat Key houses Singapore's oldest suspension bridge. This is Kavanagh Bridge, unofficially known as the Love Bridge to some, was a location for a lot of proposals and wedding shoots. Built in 1869, it links Commercial Square on the south bank to the government quarter on the north bank of the river. Based on the vintage police notices that are still up, no vehicles, even cattle and horses, are allowed to cross to this date. What's more, there's art along the way. From the Kavanagh Bridge, continue your trail and you'll come across some of Singapore's remarkable structures along the riverside. Whether you're prone to nostalgia or keeping an eye firmly fixed on the future, the tiny enclave that is Boat Key is definitely worth a visit. Second on our list is Singapore River's F&B and Entertainment Arena, Clark Key. Whether you're a born and bred local, long-time expat or in the no tourist, you've probably been to this vibrant hotspot. Well, for starters, food, food and more food! No trip to Clark Key is complete without tasting its diverse offerings. Head over to Clark Key Central and treat yourself to some of Singapore's tastiest fares. Not only do these restaurants offer delectable cuisine but also a magnificent view of the river. 
Oh, and you can even stroll along the riverside after a hearty meal. See that bridge? That is the Reed Bridge, also known as the Malacca Bridge to some. Perhaps the most known bridge along Singapore River, this became a popular meeting spot. Who would have thought Clark Key hides a heritage gem? Behold the architectural wonder that is the old Hill Street Police Station. Famed for its Technicolor shutter and neo-renaissance design, this rainbow-painted structure is a perfect spot for your next Instagram post. If there's a spot by the river that gives us the chillest ambiance, it's got to be the tranquil and lush Robertson Key. Well, since you've asked, while it's quieter than Boat Key and Clark Key, Robertson Key's beauty lies in its laid-back charm. If you're looking for a place to relax and unwind in the city, the answer is simply Robertson Key. Whether it's the large trees and shady nooks or the lax yet lavish environment, there's just something enticing about Robertson Key's chilled riverside. I for one think that Robertson Key's laid-back air makes getting some downtime fully possible. Running across Robertson Key is this significant bridge that boasts its unique multicolor design. With its vibrant hues, one simply can't miss Singapore's Bridge of Art, the Alcove Bridge. Do not leave without taking a picture of this kaleidoscope wonder. If you can't visit Singapore River anytime soon, I hope you've enjoyed this virtual trail. After all, what's not to love about the Singapore River? Find out more about the Singapore River at www.singapore-river.sg Welcome to Level 33, the world's highest urban microbrewery. Where all beers are brewed on site. Where brewing is in our DNA, which inspires our menu. And where people feel like home, even though they are away from home. Craftsmanship is for me the expression of the passion and creativity of a person that is not mass market and creates something really unique. We have obviously the microbrewery as the anchor and key element of craftsmanship that goes throughout the venue. Craftsmanship means that you need to do more things by yourself, so the human touch is central. Of course, you put your creativity and your ideas inside. You can manipulate to have a different output if you want to. Our beers are usually very traditional, but we have also unique seasonal beers like our brewed beer, which is brewed with the same yeast as Champagne Baron de Rothschild, which is our house champagne. So after eight very successful years here at Level 33, we wanted to address our customer needs by creating a more formal environment in the dining room and a social, more vibrant, cozy environment here in the social area and a beautiful raw and seafood oyster bar behind me with best view of the bay. I think first of all, Apple 33 being the world's highest urban microbrewery, this is our uniqueness, this is our heart. So when we think about food, it's okay, what can we deliver here, taking advantage of the brewery. So we start to think of okay, the beer we can use, but also the byproduct, which is spent grains. We are now offering a contemporary cuisine where yeast meets waste. So it's a modern, food focus, but also brewery-inspired cuisine. So I guess that's what really makes us unique because we are a restaurant in a brewery and we are making use of that as well. It's cooking from Chef Archan, then we have Gabriel's beer and Martin's Visions. I think somehow between we are the bridge connecting points of 
of all these elements towards the guests, especially with the new cuisine that we have contemporary, to transform somehow with food and beer, we always try to blend it together and show kisses to the guests. I recommend Level 33 to my family and friends because it's a unique experience from the food beverage offer. You have the obviously homemade beers. We have a beautiful wine selection with boutique wines from all over the world. And the dining options range from the formal dining for corporate lunches or dinners to here to the social area or on the terrace with beautiful drinks, finger food and everything paired with a unique, magnificent bay view. Every month, I block out an afternoon in my calendar. This afternoon is dedicated to just wondering, exploring, and discovering. So every week, I carve out a day where I just go out wondering, without a plan, looking for a new adventure. I call it my day of inspiration. One of my favorite places to wander is the Civic District. It has a bit of everything that I love. Art, theater, museums, nature, architecture, great food and drinks, and so much more. We start my day of inspiration right here at the Queen Elizabeth Walk at the Esplanade Park. Let me just show you what I like about this stretch. There are a few places in Singapore where I am so reminded of both our past and present. On one side is the modern architecture of the present, and here you can find historic landmarks that remind us of our journey to get here. Believe it or not, this is Singapore's first and oldest underpass, built in 1964. I've been here all the time, but never noticed. Some of Singapore's best theatre and musical events happen right here in the Victoria Theatre. I love to look at its architecture. It's such a beautiful building. The Asian Civilization Museum is one of my favourite places to take a deep dive into our past. But today, I want to focus on the present. There is a sculpture nearby that I really, really love. Come with me, I'll show you. And this is it. This is a bronze sculpture called The Five Boys by the River right outside the iconic Fullerton Hotel. So I believe the sculpture captures the yesteryears as well as this kampong spirit. The Civic District is really where modern Singapore began. But even after so many years, the spirit of those boys, the first generation, is still alive in the Civic District. There is just so much going on. Hey! Hi there! Hi. I'm doing good! I'm really excited! <laughs> so there are many ways to get around the Civic District, and this is the choice method to do it. Do it! I love this spot. You get a great view, you're just by the river, and it's great for people watching too. Well, all at the same time while you're enjoying a good cup of coffee and some cake. Sunsets never fail to inspire me, and this is one of my favorite spots to take it all in. Art doesn't just belong in museums or in theaters. It can also be in a beautifully plated dish or in nature or in the environment around us. I think while wandering the Civic District today, I do feel art is everywhere. Home to some of Singapore's most iconic art exhibitions, I spent many hours wandering through the rooms of the National Gallery. 
But today, I'm here for a different reason. Come with me. At Violet Un, Singapore's culinary history is served to you in a beautiful, stunning setting that captures the vibrancy of Peranakan culture. Mm. Peranakan food is just synonymous to the Southeast Asian region. It's made out of so many different ingredients from a variety of different cultures. In many ways, you could say it's art on a plate. Truly inspiring day today at the Civic District, and I think you and I would both agree that we are surrounded with so much art in our daily lives. And as an artist, I highly recommend that you discover this art of living. Welcome to The Projector. We're on the fifth floor of the Golden Mile Tower in what feels like a car park, probably because we are in a car park, but inside we're gonna find one of the shining lights of Singapore's creative art scene. So let's go check it out. The Projector is in the, currently the only independent cinema space in Singapore. We're kind of like off the beaten track as you probably found out. Yeah, I did find that out. <laughs> it's a little bit hard to get here, but uh, it's a rewarding experience. This unique building once housed a 1,500-seat cinema called the Golden Theatre, making it the largest in Singapore. The projector retains the original walls, the floors and the seat mechanisms, and it's this mix of old and new that really gives the space authenticity. I think an interesting fact was that it used to show propaganda films as well, North oh, Korean okay. films, and then it became like a soft porn kind of cinema. But the seats are completely new. Um, <laughs> This is where we show most of our more serious uh, art house films. As you can see, it's more intimate. The other room was very green. I assume this is the, the red room, is it? Yeah, this is the red room. We do hold the uh, more fun films down here. We want people to have fun down here, just come here, have a good time, have a drink. So this is a, a bit of a change of scenery. I can't say I've ever found a bar in a car park before. Yeah, this is one of our newer additions uh, within the last couple of months. This is where we hold most of our after parties for the films that we had. Even if you're not a film buff, the projector is well worth a visit for its old world charm. And the fact that after the screening, well, you can even go for a party in the car park. It all started from the day when my father passed me his old cameras, you know. He got interest towards photography. So he said, okay, you, you want to continue photography, you want to take something, you can have it as my presence. And that's the day I started. One of my cousin, he was an artist. The day once camera come in, all the painter who do realistic picture, the portrait picture, everybody lost their job. So based on his profession, cameras are their enemies. Then I said, okay, why don't we do something new? We accumulate all your enemies, put it at one place, and we do it in a unique way what others have not done it. Then he say, it's on, let's try, and that's how all it started. Uh, if you take a PGM camera, it took about eight to nine years for us to found it. It is designed in such a way that a PGM can carry. I love all my collection. One is world's first button camera. About 100 years back, they can create such a unique thing. There is a button you can put in your coat and they can control it here. The button can open and take a picture for you. See how clever those days the spies were. If you talk about a unique piece, yeah, we do have a machine gun used by Japanese military in the World War II. They use this gun to train the Air Force people. If you see, there is a lens. If you click, you don't get bullets. It will shoot you. I don't believe in a shortcut can make something good. Bridgetus is one of my personal brands and now I start to let it run by all my apprentices. 
my goal is to bring back the original house to make a good suit how a real tailors must be we use the best quality fabric and also we are using the best interlining fabric. It takes about 8 weeks to finish a bespoke suit. After taking measurement, we will start to do the pattern drafting. One or two fitting sessions will be done and after revising the draft, it will take us almost 80 hours to finish the jacket by hand. We are trying to get something rich to the customer demand and request what he wants. So in the whole processing, the customer can enjoy very personalised service. Many of the tailors have already got out from the traditional. They find an easier way, faster way to process a suit. Don't care about what is the quality will turn out. Nowadays, not many people are willing to carry on the craft. It requires a lot of time and effort. I found that tailoring is what interested me the most. In fact, I love the traditional craftsmanship. So I don't wish the craft to die. We don't believe shortcut can get a good suit. So every step you are follow exactly. So that's my idea, to start the business. Mint Museum of Toys, our collection is made up of toys from more than 40 countries. The countries are like Bulgaria, even made in Singapore toys. We have no windows in this museum. And the huge facade behind is to protect from the harmful rays of the sunlight because our toys are all in mint or near mint condition. We showcase about more than 8,000 pieces of toys over here. This is less than 10% of the owner's collection. Uh, remaining 90% we store in warehouses. When people think about perfumes, they're most closely associated with the big French brands. But cultures that have the most links to the art of perfumery, I would say, are the Arabic cultures and actually the Indian cultures. I'm actually in this trade because of my grandfather. He started a perfume shop here in the 1930s. A lot of what you see over here, we used to just keep it in the back room. You know, it's a messy process. Uh, but now people want to see the process more and more. Like an open kitchen, people want to see what happens. By doing it this way, you actually become a part of the process and uh, you get to choose your ingredients. It's not just a finished product that you're buying, but you know, you've inserted yourself into the process as well. Something fresh and clean, like you know, clean cotton, bed linen. Uh, like clean skin? Yes, yeah. clean skin. I think it needs a bit more pepper. Bottle it up for me, please. I hope that people will start to see perfumes as an experience rather than just as a finished product that you pick up off a shelf. Instagrammable. Being Instagrammable is all well and good, but the food's got to be great as well. Here we have the cauliflower furikake, which smells super enticing. I can't wait to dig in. Vegetables never tasted so good. Got the grilled portobello salad right in front of me and I can't wait to tuck in. Here we have 
here's the Eggs Benedict and the eggs are the best in Singapore. Organic grade A eggs. Oh, check that out. Check this out, you've got a whole soft shell crab to yourself. No wonder it's a bestseller. There's no better combination than waffles, chicken, watermelon, and maple syrup. Nice coffee flavor, and you see the color change as you drink it. Really fun stuff. Here is the boozy Sadap Tendo milkshake. That kick of rum at the end. I'm a fan of this. There are bars, and then there are cool bars by the beach. Singapore is a tropical island, and if you want to make the most out of the trip, be sure to soak up the sun and dip your toes in the sand with an ice-cold beer or cocktail in your hand. I'm now at Seaside Siloso Beach Sentosa, where you'll find a collective of bars such as Sandbar, Coast, and breaking the charm and rustic beach afternoon vibe is Bikini Bar, where the legendary quarterly beach party, Via Kini Rocks, is held. Let's check it out. Heart thumping live music, irresistible drink and food offers, fun beach games led by Bikini Babes. Bikini Bar comes complete with a pool table and an island bar. Bringing some of the best homegrown bands in Singapore, be sure to join in the fun held every quarter. You'll be forgiven for mistaking this as a Bali beach. If you're looking for something a bit more laid back and intimate by the beach, then you can't miss Coasts at Seaside, located right beside Bikini Bar. With Instagram-worthy backdrops, Coasts offers a shaded deck, beach seatings and sunbeds to the water's edge. What I'm having is the slipper lobster spaghetti and banana and chocolate pie, paired with an ice-cold Cronenberg lager. Cheers! After a hearty lunch, what better way to spend your lazy evenings than to rest and relax on one of Sandbar's new and comfortable beanbag lounges. And if you're still hungry, remember to try their roasted meats, mini burgers and tasty desserts. The ultimate beach dining experience is never complete without live music spun by Sandbar's very own DJ. Glorious sunset, spectacular daily fireworks, Sometimes, the best experiences come free. Seaside, the ultimate beachfront experience. Check out the website below for more. Experience the award-winning Par 72 18-hole golf course. Spanning 6,493 meters, the course features undulating fairways, varying lengths of holes, and dramatic pot bunkers that brings hours of challenges and enjoyment for golfers. Marina Bay Golf Course is one of the few golf courses in Singapore open for night golfing. So don't let the fun stop when the sun sets. Marina Bay Golf Course offers everything a discerning golfer could ask for. Who can say no to an all-day breakfast, especially when each dish is inspired by breakfast from all over the world? I'm here at Wild Honey, a breakfast place that's always buzzing with activity any time of the day. A wildly popular restaurant, Wild Honey's menu features an incredible choice of breakfast from different countries. Think Tunisian, Norwegian, Canadian, Scandinavian and many more. It's what I call a global gastronomical adventure. If you fancy something vegetarian, there's a huge range to choose from. Today, I'm having the Flinders Lane. It comes with a crispy base topped with perfect poached eggs, grilled asparagus, sliced avocado, spicy tomato and sesame seed and nuts for an added texture. Highly recommended for brain food lovers. And I always pair my breakfast with a cup of excellent coffee from the Common Man Coffee Roasters. 
awarded the Certificate of Excellence by TripAdvisor in 2019 and voted Best Breakfast in Singapore for many years, Wild Honey has gone from breakfast to breakfast and has opened its third outlet in the sprawling South Beach Avenue. Wild Honey opens from as early as 8am but do check out each outlet's operating hours. You'll find Wild Honey at these three locations. Wild Honey Mandarin Gallery, Wild Honey Scott Square, and Wild Honey South Beach. A famous freediver once said that scuba divers dive to look around and freedivers dive to look within, and that really spoke to me. I went to Hawaii, the big island of Kona, and I tried um, just diving off of shore. All of a sudden, I could hear the humpbacks offshore. So loudly, they was reverberating in my chest. You couldn't hear them from the surface, and you wouldn't have been able to hear them if you were scuba diving. And so I thought, oh wow, this is really amazing. You get these incredible experiences. I should try this. And so that's where I started. I'm Chris. I would describe myself as being post-corporate. I used to work for a company, and um, now I'm doing things for myself. Freediving can change someone's life, um, and has changed my life. Um, it is a mind-body discipline. It opens up experiences that are not available to everybody. In fact, only a tiny fraction of the world will ever be able to experience the things that you can see and feel while you're freediving. <sighs> my hands are still tingling and my heart is still beating really fast right now. It was amazing. When I accidentally hit someone, it really felt like there was a zombie touching me. It feels so big in there. It's intense, it's scary, and it's a workout. It was insane. It was so much fun. It was awesome. I felt like I was in a zombie apocalypse myself. so real. I felt like you were walking upside down. I was so into the game. We just kept shouting. It was out of the ordinary. It was so fun. Please! No more shopping! Um, hello? Wanna escape? Where? Somewhere awesome! Hell yeah! Woo! All right! Yeah, Singapore is trampoline parks, but Bounce is so much more than that. Woo! All right! Yo, Ruffy, can you do a flip? No, can you show me how? So all you need to do, one, up! Flipping is just one of the things you can learn at Flight Academy, where one of Bounce's awesome experts teach you how to do some super cool tricks. Good, Ruffy. Much better now. He's <laughs> Play the 10 tricks on the freestyle list and get a free 2 for one voucher. It is as easy as the sit drop. Good. If you want even more of a challenge, check this out. You ready to lose to a kid? You gotta get up! Get up, get up! Get up, get up! Expert.
Park is like Ninja Warrior, but way cooler. I know I make it look really easy, but seriously, this is not for wusses. some shopping but can we take a break for just an hour i know this great place they do aussie coffee it's just around the corner Well, the first meal I cooked was kind of a disaster. My parents came over uh, for dinner and I decided to roast a duck, which I don't know why I did that. I had no idea what I was doing. I remember uh, dad very sort of uh, politely saying, um, yes, it takes a certain skill to cook duck. <laughs> You know, my DNA as a chef really is so ingredient directed and often ingredients just speak for themselves. When you live in a big city like Singapore, you often can get detached from ingredients and detached from the source. As a cook, you always have to take time outside of the kitchen, outside of your usual environment. So coming here to the Kelong is always a great source of inspiration because we can really find a lot of different things that are uh, sustainable and local. Uh, that helps us to bring our own cooking to another level back at Stella. The best cooking is really something that's very personal. Uh, it's the personal experience of exploration. It's amazing, even today we discovered new uh, flavors right here at Kalong. There's so much discovery and there's so much immediate enjoyment, I think, when you see, get the reaction uh, from people uh, to food. It reflects your personality, really. The day of the chef being the one that says, okay, this is what you're gonna eat, and that's that is gone. So having this connection with where the ingredients come from, I try to bring that into our whole environment in terms of Stella, all the rest of the chefs. I want them to feel equally as passionate about the sourcing, about the producers, because I know that that just always elevates the flavors that we want to produce to another level. As the sun goes down and the lights come on, you want to give people an experience. There was one that actually made someone cry once. That was the first time I've ever experienced that here. 
I would drop music from Africa and uh, you know, I play stuff from Latin America. I play a bit of hip hop and like I'll move in and out to kind of fit the, the space there. Yeah. For me, I'm, I'm so lucky to have a view like that. From the time I started work here, this is the one thing that always I always marvel at and I never get tired of, this view. The club sound beyond 10pm is always a little bit more mainstream, a little bit more digestible for uh, the people who come up here. Because you not only have tourists, you have hotel guests, yeah. and you do have people who want to club. I think there's something for everyone. <laughs> good comments from from the crowd everyone's like oh you know it's really cool to hear music from my country and you know like c'est la vie being quite an international uh, destination but it's one of those things where you, you never actually make the decision to start it and that was probably the most important part of this whole process was actually just committing to the fact that i was going to spend years I, I didn't know it was going to be three years but i knew it was going to be a long time and I went through periods of confidence and, and, and near depression on this ship. If you look at something for so long and you spend so much time working on it, you lose all confidence that it's going to be of interest to anybody, anybody else. So that's why I guess I was so excited when the film was released and, and people sort of appreciated the work that had gone into it. So it started to feel a bit more worthwhile again. And that it wasn't so much that I wanted to show off or show people the city, the city growing. I think I actually wanted to see it myself. Singapore's got nowhere to, nowhere, nowhere to grow. It's not like a lot of places in the world where cities sprawl and get bigger. In Singapore, things tend to get taken down before they get built up. It has to be creative in how it plans for development. And so for me, that's, that's a story. It's like, it's like the modernization of Singapore and just seeing it so almost reinvent itself every, every few years. The way that I wanted to shoot it, I didn't just want to have permanent cameras which would create a, a very common time-lapse effect where you see a cloud that appears and a cloud that disappears. I wanted the whole film to flow organically. So I had to do a lot of planning and started with about 30 core shots. By the end of the film it grew to about 70 locations around the city. And then it took a lot of, lot of discipline. And it can be a little bit of a lonely ex existence when you spend three, three and a half years working on a project. I don't think, for example, even my wife and my daughter really know how much went into this film. But I, I really do enjoy, enjoy being like an outside observer. Uh, and even though the techniques have changed throughout all of my films, there's still a sense that it's almost like you're in a separate place when you're looking at the, at, at the city. Um, so I'm not really getting in people's faces with cameras, I'm more just somebody who's sort of quietly off to the side looking at the world from a, from a distance.